This is the Roman Legion, the greatest military force in ancient history and the basis for every professional army since. But just how did the citizens of a small Italian town come to conquer the world? This time on Conquest, how to win with the weapons of Rome. Team, this is going to be tough. We're going to put you in Roman armor, give you Roman equipment, and train you to fight with the weapons and tactics of the legionary. But it's not just about combat. It's about getting into the mindset of the Roman soldier. His absolute confidence in victory, his refusal to accept defeat. We're going to make you invincible. And then, for your final challenge, we're going to send you into battle against the barbarians. Welcome to the Roman army. In the early days of Rome, army service was compulsory for every Roman citizen who held property. It was reason that these men would fight to defend their property and also fight to gain more of it. The Roman state expanded because its army was incredibly aggressive and disciplined. Each nation they defeated would be offered a chance to join the expanding empire. The Romans were hard to refuse. The alternative was annihilation. Enemy states became allies, and their soldiers became auxiliaries in the Roman army. The Romans copied from their enemies. Weapons, armor, formations, tactics, anything that worked. This is male armor, copied from the Celts and in use throughout the Roman period. You could stab through mail, but it would withstand a cut. The only problem was a really hard blow would break the bone beneath it. So, from the first century AD, the Roman legionary wore this, the Lorica Segmentata. This was made of curved iron plates and it gave absolutely brilliant protection to the body and to the shoulders. The helmets were of many styles but the same basic design, with this strengthening piece across the forehead with these extra eyebrows here. Sometimes crossbars reinforced the whole skull. These cheek pieces protected the face and the whole helmet gave you excellent vision and these ear slots allowed you to hear. It was vital to be able to hear commands in the Roman army. Turn to face me. There's also this very large neck guard. If I cut down at your head, your natural instinct is to turn away and hunch up. And as you do that, that neck guard comes down, slides over the shoulder to protect your neck and shoulders. The Roman legionary was a valuable investment. You were worth protecting. Team, get into your armor. Around 100 BC, the Roman general Marius reorganized the legion. First, he opened it to all Roman citizens, whether they held property or not. They would be a permanent standing army of paid soldiers. Many new recruits couldn't afford their own armor and weapons, and these had to be supplied by the state. So for the first time, military equipment became standardized. Weapons. First, the shield, the scutum. This was made like plywood. Strips of wood glued together, made into shape, covered with linen and leather, with a boss and edging of bronze or iron. Now this was shaped to curve around the body. It's over half an inch thick, and until you get used to it, it's heavy. Next, the pilum. This is the javelin, the Roman throwing spear. You'll have two of these, one light and one heavy. Around your waist, you're wearing a kingulum. Here, around the parts that you might wish to use after the battle. Also on the belt is this, the Roman pugio, a stabbing dagger. This will punch its way through just about anything. On a baldric from the shoulder hangs your sword. Now this is on the right hip so that you can draw it without it getting caught up in your shield. This is the Gladius Hispaniensis. It's a sword copied from the Celts of Spain. This was the sword which won an empire. Legionaries, take up your helmets, your shields and your javelins. There is a problem with every well-equipped army. It's followed by a baggage train, which moves very slowly and needs lots of protection. The Roman general Marius reduced it in size. Now each squad of eight men was allowed one mule to carry a tent, millstones and extra supplies. Everything else was to be carried by the legionary. Are you ready to go? Yeah! No, you're not. Every legionary needs one of these. A pole with a crosspiece. On this you will have a cloak, a bedroll, mess tins, water bottle, between 3 and 15 days of supplies and any personal kit, such as a writing tablet and 
toilet paper. In addition, each of you will carry at least one of the following. A wicker basket, a bucket, a chain, an adze, a hatchet, and stakes. Also, a shovel, an entrenching tool, a turf cutter, and this. A delabra, the Roman pickaxe, because the Roman soldier was also a builder. The average Roman soldier was short, strong, and extremely fit. They had to be. Every night on campaign, the legion would spend up to two hours building a fortified camp, digging a ditch and a parapet, and putting their stakes on top of it to form a palisade. They slept well and safely, and the next day, if things went badly, they had a camp ready to come back to. The soldiers worked in full armor, while others protected them. If they were attacked, they were ready to defend themselves immediately. The Legion had to be able to march 24 miles in five hours, and believe me, that is fast. So in your first hour, you lot should easily be able to cover 50 lengths of this field, which is just under five miles. We gotta march? No way. When do we get to use the weapons? This soldier has just disobeyed an order. The Roman army is held together by discipline. So you lot will all march with full weapons, but you will march with full kit. <laughs> Romans were usually outnumbered, but they had excellent communications and a superb road system. It was vital to get the legions rapidly to wherever the trouble was. And these guys could march faster than any other foot soldier. Even in peacetime, a legionary had to route march three times a month in full kit, which weighed between 80 and 100 pounds. The legionaries called themselves after the name of the general who thought up this brilliant idea, Marius's mules. Team, halt! Fall out. Pathetic. How's the morale? Oh, it's great. But so it should be. This is an army of professional long-service soldiers. Well paid, fully equipped, excellent health and welfare benefits, and a good pension after 25 years of service. Although, of course, you weren't allowed to marry. Are oh, you kidding? Well, you've got other things to think about. You're about to meet your new centurion. Centurions were the drill sergeants of their day. They ran the Roman army with extreme discipline and were often more feared than the enemy. Perete star, star. Ad gladium, cleaner. One particularly nasty fellow was nicknamed Give Me Another for his practice of breaking his staff over his soldiers' backs. Gentlemen, this is the sixth Legion of Victrix. And here is Dave Michaels, also known as Flavius Crispus, your new centurion. Flavius, these men are tired and they are hungry, so perhaps just an hour of drill before lunch? With this sorry looking lot? At least an hour. All right, then, move away! Move away! See it. The Legion was made up of about 4,800 fighting men, plus about 1,000 support staff. It was divided into ten cohorts. The first cohort was extra large, while the other nine were each made up of six centuries. The century was the basic tactical unit and contained about 80 men under a centurion. Each unit broke down further into teams of eight men who shared a tent. Discipline in the Roman army was swift and brutal. Any regiment that showed cowardice in battle faced decimation. Today, we take that word to mean an overwhelming destruction of an army's ranks. But to the Romans who invented it, it meant killing one out of every ten soldiers in a regiment that required discipline. The most famous act of decimation took place during the slave uprising of 73 BC, led by the gladiator Spartacus. Two legions who lost to Spartacus in battle were duly decimated by their commanders. So there was ample incentive for soldiers to train hard and perform well in battle. On the battlefield, units had to move around each other and support each other with speed and discipline. There was a complex system of commands by various types of trumpet. Some designed to be heard at a great distance over the noise of battle. There were also visual cues. Each century, cohort and the legion itself had a standard which it followed. These were considered sacred objects. 
and the loss of a standard was an unbearable disgrace. Mendata Katate, pick up your shield. Add Testudanam. Moe! It was essential for every man to learn the battlefield commands and movements. This one is the Testudo, or Tortoise, mainly used for siege warfare. Moe! At last, our team is ready for the next stage. They have the equipment, the discipline, and an understanding of drill and tactics. More important, they have the weapons. Next, they learn to use them. Our team has learnt the basics of drill and discipline in the Roman Legion. Now it's time to fight. You have to understand the fighting spirit of the Romans. They were entirely aggressive. Even when they were attacked themselves, they moved forward into the attack. They took the fight to the enemy. Now they had big shields. These weren't to hide behind. These were offensive weapons. Step forward. I'm going to walk through you. Try and stop me. You take my point. And look at the armor. The Romans had the technology to cover the entire body in articulated armor. They chose not to, because with the Lorica Segmentata, you could run. And I don't mean backwards. Your first weapon is the Pelum. This is a short-range weapon. Very heavy, deadly, brilliantly designed. A rain of these would come down on the front ranks of the enemy. And if he was unarmored, he'd be dead. If he had just a weak shield, this point would break through it, and the metal shaft would continue through and pin the man behind it. If he had a heavy shield, well, this point would stick in the wood, and this shaft was designed to bend on impact, making the shield completely useless. This wasn't a defensive weapon to hold an enemy off. It was a vicious, aggressive tool for killing. The Pelum was just to soften them up. The Roman Legion was a machine with 5,000 blades, and the Gladius was the blade. It's unusual to be able to hold a weapon in your hand and know that this changed the world. And it's so simple. Why this weapon when the Romans had so many other choices? I'll show you. With a long sword, you need lots of room to be able to wield it effectively, which is hopeless for formation fighting. You could use a shield with it, but the shield had to be small and held in one hand. And most importantly, Wielding this can be very, very tiring. Now there is an alternative, the falcata. Now this was used by the Greeks and the Spanish Celts. It's extremely heavy and very effective. Step forward, but in close combat, you had only one real stroke with this, the downward chop. And every time you raise it to make your attack, he'd stab you. Now, the gladius. Step forward. The Romans knew how to cut with this weapon, to clear an opponent's blade, or to attack the head, the shoulders, or the arm. But they also knew this was a complete waste of time. This weapon is designed for thrusting. Here I am, tucked in behind my shield. I can push forwards, but it's very hard to push me back in this position. And my gladius is at the level of his stomach. If I stab forwards, I'll hit him in the guts, in the testicles, or the femoral artery at the top of the thigh. There's just a chance that he may parry my incoming thrust. Then I stab upwards to the throat, the face, or the eyes. It's almost impossible to avoid at this range, because the crucial thing about this attack is speed. You use your arm like a piston. Stab, 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 stab! It's completely simple, absolutely brutal, and you will practice it repeatedly. Romans trained for six months before being accepted into the Legion. They had to be able to read and write to understand written orders. Aside from learning the commands, formations, drill and marching, they spent hours on weapon technique. Throwing the pilum and using wooden swords of double the standard weight to build up their strength. They practiced against each other and against a pella, a thick wooden pole as high as a man. In close order combat, each man is given three feet of space. You are not bunched up, your shields are not overlapping. You have to give the gladius room to do its work. The weapon is short, aggressive, you have to get in close. Let's see the machine in action. Ready, advance. You can see why some have described the advancing Roman legion as a mini-toothed barracuda. You have to know what weapons you're up against and how to defeat them. Over there is a group of warriors. 
behind a wall of shields and spears. The uh, first thing is you're going to do serious damage with your pilum. They're closely packed together and they cannot raise their shields above their heads. That's your first weapon. When you make contact, this is what you do. Step forward, step forward. I want you to fix those spears with your shields. Move in. I'm in the rank behind you and I'm going to force my way between you, push my way through, hack and chop at these spears until they get close enough. These guys don't stand a chance. Here are two heavy weapons used against the Legion, the Falx and the Axe. Either of these can carve straight through your helmet. But if you just sit back and defend yourself, I will hack you to pieces. What you have to do with this is attack. So as I come in, you have to attack with your shield held high. Do it! Good! Because I have to use two hands, I'm a good target. The long sword is more difficult. I have a longer reach than you, so you have to keep driving me back. Push me onto my back foot. Do it. Don't let me have room to use this thing. That's it. Keep advancing. That's right. And remember, you can stab me three times for every cut I can give you. To help meet the many types of enemy they had to face, the Romans used large numbers of auxiliary forces. These would be light infantry, cavalry, archers. These soldiers were paid less than the legionary, but after 25 years' service, they and their families could become Roman citizens, entitled to all the privileges and protections that went along with that. The auxiliaries were good soldiers, but the battles were won by the heavy infantry foot soldier of the legion. It's time to try some of the techniques we've learnt with a full-scale attack. In two disciplined ranks, our team charges forward, after only a small amount of training, the effect is already obvious. The enemy front line would be devastated by a hail of Pila just seconds before the Romans smashed into them and cut them to pieces with the sword. As the enemy were bunched up, the Roman rear ranks would throw their Pila over their own front ranks into the densely packed mass. It was a mincing machine, and all it takes to start a rout is for one man to break and run, and it won't be a Roman. I feel great, I feel pumped, I feel like I could tear into a real army, not just hay bales now. Lots of uh, speed, shock and violence, we just, we just tore right through them. But what would it be like against a real enemy? At last, our own legionaries are ready to face the final test, the Barbarians. For their final challenge, our team is faced with a group of Barbarians forming a shield wall against them. Both sides are using real weapons, but a well-thrown pilum could kill with ease. So we have substituted bales of hay for our frontline Barbarians. Gentlemen, your hour has come. There is your enemy. You will charge the hay bales, throw your pila. You will then go through the hay bales and make contact with the Barbarian force beyond. Are you ready? Yeah! Attack! The team throw their peeler with devastating accuracy. They cut through the hay bales and reform to face the enemy. The barbarians charge towards them. The shields smash together. And our team starts pushing, jabbing and thrusting. Although outnumbered, they break through the shield wall. Once they're on the run, the barbarians are easy targets. Our team has the discipline not to chase too far and to maintain formation. Bodies litter the ground, including some of ours. Well, you took a few casualties. Do you think you did well? Yeah! Not well enough! There's another barbarian force at the top of the hill! Including archers! Marching orders! Fast, come on! The barbarian archers are guarding a fortification. To succeed, our team must breach the wall and eliminate the enemy force. Our team marches to meet the barbarians, who let fly with a volley of arrows. The team forms a testudo under a hail of arrows and marches slowly forward. The archers keep firing. Like an armoured tank, the Testudo advances unscathed towards the enemy line. Suddenly, our team changes formation. They begin the attack with swords and shields. 
This time, things are not so easy. Our team is exhausted. The Barbarians fight as individual warriors, while our team back each other up and work together. Although the Barbarians fight viciously, they are no match for our superior Roman weapon strategy and training. At last, our team mounts the fortification and can now rain blows down on the defenders. The wall is breached. The Barbarians cut and run to the relative safety of the forest, perhaps to fight another day. Well done, you look exhausted. Yes. But you gained the victory, and for the Romans, that's all that mattered. Our team has shown that on the right terrain, confident, well-trained, disciplined, the Roman Legion was the finest fighting force in the world. We have learnt how to win with the weapons of Rome. There was a time when the world seemed headed for destruction by hordes of warriors known to history as the Barbarians. It appeared that only the Roman army stood between survival and the end of civilization. But what was the truth? Who were the Barbarians? And how could they defeat the might of Rome? The weapons of the Barbarians, next on Conquest. All right, guys, gather around. You are a bunch of barbarians, and you have a problem. Over many centuries, thousands of you have migrated into Europe. You now live in many tribes on the borders of a vicious, aggressive military dictatorship called the Roman Empire. Now, we are going to teach you to use a whole range of barbarian weapons, and for your final challenge, you will attack and defeat a Roman legion. <laughs> so who were the barbarians? The word may come from the Sanskrit for stammering. The Romans believed that their enemies were savage and could barely communicate. They were not Roman, therefore not civilized. This was untrue. Many of the barbarian tribes had advanced cultures and a highly developed morality which they considered superior to the violent and decadent ways of Rome. Barbarians repeatedly defeated Roman armies in battle, but always seemed to lose the wars. Let's look at a map. Among the first barbarian peoples who made contact with the Romans were the Gauls. And that was the Roman name for the great Celtic civilization. Extremely artistic, very warlike. Mark, you're going to be our Gaul. Now, the Romans were terrified of you, with good reason, because in 400 BC, you invaded Italy and sacked Rome. Now, the Gauls were known as swordsmen, using the long sword, like this one. Now, you need strength and flexibility to use that weapon, which is why most of them didn't have armour. So, you will go into battle wearing exactly what they did, tattoos and otherwise completely naked. <laughs> Are you kidding? Well, all right, sometimes they wore pants and tunics of wool and fur and hide. And like all barbarian peoples, they used spears and shields and short-throwing spears called javelins. After many wars with the Gallic tribes, Julius Caesar conquered Gaul and crushed the final resistance in 52 BC. The Romans at last took revenge for the earlier sack of Rome in 400 BC. They slaughtered the Gallic people and destroyed their civilization. But it had taken them 350 years to do it. Elsewhere, other barbarians were giving them just as hard a time. Now, in 218 BC, the Romans invaded Hispania, Spain, where they fought for 200 years with the Celtiberians. Mario, that's you. Now, your guys were brilliant guerrilla fighters, and they had some remarkable weapons, including this one, the Falcata, which is based on the ancient Greek coppice, probably brought to Spain by Greek merchants. Now, this was made of the finest quality steel, and the design put the weight of the blade down towards the end, increasing what's called the kinetic efficiency of the blow. In other words, get out of the way. Now, the Celtiberians had another sword, 
called a gladius. You might recognize this as a simple, short, stabbing sword. And they had a spear made entirely of iron called a soliferum. And these guys were great metal workers. It's possible that they even invented mail. So, Mario, you've got mail. Many Spanish and Celtic weapons were copied by the Romans. The short sword became the basis for the Roman gladius. The soliferum may have been the antecedent of the Roman javelin called the pilum. The Romans knew a good weapon when they saw one, and they needed them. In 115 BC, what we think was an early Germanic tribe called the Cimbri invaded Italy. They defeated five Roman armies, one after another. This led the Roman general Marius to completely reorganize the Roman army. The Cimbri were defeated in 102 BC, but the Germanic invasions had only just begun. The Germanic tribes also used the spear and shield, but they had a bunch of their own weapons as well, including this one, the sax, a short chopping and stabbing weapon. Here, shove that in your belt. They also used the axe. This is the largest type, the broad axe. Now, this could really carve into a Roman shield, but you need both hands to use it. The smallest version was this, the Francisca, or the throwing axe. But you just try throwing one of these. So that's what our team is going to do. Toss a variety of axes against these Roman shields. The throwing axe was useless against a shield. But it wasn't used like that. It was thrown high into the air in large numbers. It must have been very discouraging to get hit with one of these. I also want to show you this. It's a falx, a double-handed weapon popular with another group of barbarians called the Dacians. Chris, you're a Dacian. Now, the Dacians lived in an area of Europe that is now Romania. And from 81 AD, the Romans attacked them. You know, these Romans, they are not nice people to be neighbours with. So now we've got four basic types of barbarian. We have the Gaul, the Celt, the German and the Dacian. They're remarkable warriors and all had excellent and different types of weapons. The barbarians came from different regions and brought different weapons into battle, but they shared the same tactics, or rather, tactic. There was only one. The direct frontal charge. There are the Romans. Get ready for them. <laughs> After building themselves up into a frenzy, the barbarians would make a mass charge directly at the Roman line. The idea was to run in as fast as possible, so that the Roman javelins would have less effect. Sometimes, on a signal, they would withdraw. And then charge again, repeatedly. They wanted the Romans to use up all their javelins and be forced back, or to get the Romans to break ranks and give chase. Then they could be cut down individually. These charges must have looked magnificent and terrifying. Unfortunately, they hardly ever worked. Simple. I mean, they would have killed us with javelins before we ever got there. The Romans were professional soldiers. The barbarians just weren't. The charge feels great. But do we stand a chance when we get there? I mean, these were just hay bales. The real Romans, we never would have broke their lines. We would have got chopped to pieces. He's right. The Romans always kept a reserve of fresh soldiers to replace the front line and plenty of spare javelins. They didn't tire easily and they were too disciplined to break ranks. These were the finest soldiers the Empire had to offer. The classic Roman legionary from about 100 AD. So what do you notice about him? The absolute basics. He's a foot soldier. He's well protected. He is the best heavy infantryman in the world. But like all heavy infantry, he has two weaknesses. Cavalry and missile weapons. So from the earliest times, the Romans protected this man by raising mercenary cavalry and infantry from you guys, their enemies. They would divide you up, make friends with some of you, attack the others. They use Gallic and German cavalry, archers from Syria, slingers from the Balearic Islands, and infantry with javelins, swords, spears and shields from Germany, Gaul and Dacia. So, we know that this guy has some weaknesses. 
Now let's work out how to defeat this creep. Our team has met the enemy. Now they must learn how to beat him. Our team has studied early barbarian tactics. Now they need more practice with barbarian weapons before meeting a Roman legion in battle. This is the spear, the absolutely basic weapon of all ancient peoples. It's simply a pole with a pointed blade on the end. Now the spear could be used by individual warriors or by massed infantry. The infantry spearman would usually carry a shield in the left hand. He would carry his spear either in the high guard or the low guard. Would you uh, line up behind me and beside me? Now, combined with other spearmen, he could either defend himself or advance behind a wall of spears and shields. Spears! Now, this could be very effective, especially against cavalry and infantry. Ready? By the left, advance! But the individual spearmen had very little manoeuvrability, and the whole system requires a great deal of discipline, training and cohesion. Ready? Charge! Even then, the Romans found this to be no difficulty at all. They would just fix the spears with their shields and chop their way through them. So most barbarians fought as individuals. The individual warrior used a fighting spear of about seven to eight feet long. Any longer than that, and it would become unmanageable. Now, to use it effectively, you have to have both hands, so... No shield, which means you have to rely on the spear both for offence and defence. Now, you could use body armour and a helmet, but these are heavy and slow you down, so most barbarians didn't use them. That's better. Now, against other spears, you have to clear your opponent's blade before you can thrust in yourself. And there are lots of fancy parries and avoidances, all of which are completely useless if you can't counter-attack immediately. Right, let's try it against our Roman. Now, the spear is a stabbing weapon. The idea is to keep it moving, keep it thrusting in repeatedly, changing direction with both the blade and the body. This keeps your opponent guessing. He never knows what's going to hit him next. And it also prevents him from having a chance to cut down at your blade. Don't let him do that. Because your spear then becomes a stick and you look very stupid indeed. Now, the one great advantage you have with the Roman is distance. You keep stabbing in, trying to find his weak points. Go high, force him to lift up that heavy shield. Go for the legs and then high. Keep him guessing. Go for the shield side with a feint and then stab into the unprotected body. Feint, stab! Of course, if he's any good, and believe me, he is good, he's not gonna stand there while you do this. He's going to try and get inside and attack, because once he is inside this spear, you're a dead man. The team try out spear techniques against each other, then against sword and shield. The problem with the spear is that in battle, you don't have the space to dodge about. You have warriors beside you and behind you. You may have two stabs with it before a Roman is on top of you. Shorter and lighter spears were less effective in close combat, but could be used as javelins. These were designed to be thrown into the enemy ranks before closing in with sword, axe or club. Our team is soon throwing javelins with some skill. That's good, but look what happens to javelins against this Roman shield and armour. Now that's not so good. Most of our javelins bounced off the shields and they certainly wouldn't penetrate armour. You'd be very lucky to hit an unprotected face or arm. What's more, the Romans advanced with much better spacing than this, so they presented less of a target for the javelins. Let's look at some other weapons. There's a couple of weapons we haven't talked about. One is cavalry and the other is this, the bow. Now, John, you know a little about this. Here are some bows. Show them what to do. The bow and arrow is a relatively lightweight and all-purpose weapon. Many barbarian tribes included bows as part of their arsenal. But in battle, they presented some of the same problems as the throwing axe. Shot straight on, many arrows would either miss their target or bounce away harmlessly. Instead, squads of barbarian archers would aim high in the air. 
creating a deadly rain and, in theory, terrifying the soldiers below. In close combat, barbarians used various types of cutting weapons. This is the Gallic long sword. It's a slashing weapon, very blade heavy. You can use it either with two hands or with a single hand and a shield. And against a lightly armored opponent, this would be deadly and it looks terrifying. But it will not penetrate a Roman shield. And if you get this stuck in that shield, even for a second, he'll be stabbing into your guts. Now, an alternative is this. The Dacian Falks, with a forward curving blade that went right over the shield into the helmet of the Roman. In fact, later Roman helmets had reinforcing crossbars to prevent this weapon killing the man who's wearing it. But, again, you've got to hit him with your first stroke, because if you don't, he will. Now, the axe. Everyone thinks this is a great weapon until you actually have to use it. It's true, it's very heavy. And if you actually get a good hard hit on the shield or on the armor, you'll cleave right through it. But he's not going to let you do that. The moment you start your swing, he's going to tuck under that shield, push in and stab. Of course, um, you can get a shield yourself. But if you do that, well, you have to have a much lighter axe in the other hand, which has much less penetration. And even then, for every stroke you give him, he can get two stabs in. Now, here is a weapon that really might work, the Falcata. Now, this had a really useful downward stroke and was so heavy and so sharp that it could pierce through shield, armour and helmet. It also had a really useful point on it. And what's more, it was used with a left-hand buckler, a small shield called a chytra. Now, this combination had a lot more power than the gladius and it was much more manoeuvrable than that heavy shield. But I still don't like the odds. To even things up, barbarians relied on a tried and true military tactic. If you can't beat them, join them. Barbarians who fought in the Roman army as auxiliaries learnt about Roman weapons and tactics. One such person was Arminius, who led the Cherusci tribe of northern Germany. He knew he had to force the legion to fight on ground where they could not use their massed formations. And this is the ground he chose. In the year 9 AD, three Roman legions were led deep into the Teutoburger forest. In the thick woods and undergrowth, the Romans could not fight as a unit, and their heavy armour, shields and weapons were of no use to them. The barbarians ambushed them repeatedly, day and night, jumping at them from every direction. Of 15,000 Romans, only 300 escaped. The Romans could be defeated. If barbarians were to have continued success against the Romans, they would need to use every weapon they could get their barbaric hands on. In the last centuries of the Roman Empire, the whole attitude became much more defensive as Rome withdrew behind walls and fortifications. And you can see this attitude in the weapons of the common soldier of the late Roman army. Look at this sword. It's not a gladius, it's a spatha, a long sword. The gladius was sharp, short, aggressive, a get-in-close weapon. The spatha's much longer. It says, get away from me, get back. The gladius is out. You can see it in the spear, too. The old Roman javelin, that's rejected. Now he carries a spear. Purely defensive weapon. You don't want to throw it, you want to protect yourself with it. And look at his shield, much smaller now. The armour is now mail, not plate. The Roman soldier was less fit, less well-trained, less motivated than he was before. Look at this guy. He looks like a barbarian. That's because he is one. By the 3rd and 4th centuries, the vast majority of the army was made up of barbarians called into Roman service. You guys had got inside. The Romans weren't Roman anymore. They'd lost that aggressive spirit that kept them going. Now, at last, the Romans are just another army. Our team of barbarians has a chance. Coming up, watch out, Romans. It's payback time. It's the final showdown for our team of barbarians as they face off against a Roman legion. There is the enemy, the Roman invaders. Your chance for revenge at last. You've made your plan. Take up positions for attack. The first wave is a frontal assault, easily repelled by the Romans. Our team members know that they must change tactics. 
Now the barbarians attack with spear and shield men in a wedge formation, as learned from the Romans. They don't try to fight with the Roman line, but to pierce it, to split it into two halves. Despite hard fighting from the Romans, their force is split up. Now each half can be attacked in a different way. The first half is bunched up by our barbarians, who run into the attack and then immediately withdraw. Ready, draw! Then archers shoot at the gathered Romans. They are outflanked and shot down one by one, and those who try to break out are cut down. The second group of Romans is driven back into rough, wooded ground. Here the Roman formation breaks up, and their unique weapons are of no advantage. At last, Individual barbarians fight individual Romans and beat them. The ferocity of the barbarian warrior is unleashed and legions of Roman soldiers pay the ultimate price. team on their side the barbarians had vast numbers many different weapons and outstanding courage but at first they could not defeat the roman military machine it was only when rome weakened and barbarian tactics improved that decisive victory was achieved just like our team they had to learn how to win with barbarian weapons